ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اوكي توداي وي ار ان اور ليسن ديلينغ وذ الاجروميه وات ار وي ديلينغ وذ And in these lessons here, I need you to pay close, close attention because we are going through the text. We're not doing any of the other things. We started off the text. It goes like this. Who can recite it to me at the beginning? Recite it then. Stop right there. Jazakallah khair. You guys ever see those guys on TV when they're lifting weights, you know, at the gym? And they're, going, they're encouraging him? You can encourage your brother. You can help him if he drops a word. You can stick it in there with him. That's what you're supposed to do. Okay? He is him, and there was another brother named Mustafa. Those two guys were going for the ijazah in this text. And they're the two most strongest people that I've met so thus far in English that know how to do this, this text right here in the New York area. Okay? Out of all the people who may talk the talk, him and Mustafa, those are the two of the best ones that, know, that I say know the text so f to the part that they know. Okay? Okay, so if you have time... When we're not in class, go to him and ask him your questions. Okay? There are certain people who are honest. In Mauritania, you can go up to a person and say, have you studied this? They'll tell you yes or no. If they tell you yes, they are not lying. They will not say they studied it unless they read it to a person. Not that they read it. They might have read the text you're talking about, but if they haven't read it to a sheikh or a teacher, they will say no. Do you understand that? Be like that. Be like that. Getting along. He said, Inna al kalama indana. What does Faltastami mean? So then listen up. Lafdun murakkabun mufidun. So we said, Lafdun murakkabun mufidun qad wudi'ah. And the word is wudi'ah. Wudi'a al murad, the objective with wudi'a, which literally means it was been, it's placed, meaning it's placed and put grammatically in Arabic's own form. What did I say? Placed and put with Arabic's own form, along with having being intended, meaning the person wasn't sleeping. Okay? You have to know that. Now, in al kalama indana fal tastami'a. لفظ مركب مفيد قد وضع Can I complete it? أقسامه 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 التي عليها يبنى يبنى What is it? اسم وفعل Thumma harfun ma'na. Okay, so we start off by saying aqsamuhu. What does aqsamuhu mean? No, aqsam is from the word qism. Qism is a part of something. Okay, a fraction. It's fractioned, it's parts. You understand? It's broken down into aqsam, into three different pieces. You guys got me? So the first thing it says, it says it's, that a word is lafdun murakabun mufidun qad wudi. That's what a word is. Now the types, aqsam, the types of words now, see, first we say a kalima. Say kalima. kalima. And we have the definition of a kalima. The, te the definition of a kalima, what's in there? It's lafdun, right? Murakab. What else? Mufid. And what else? And wudi'a. Right? That's what's in here. That's what's in a kalima. Next, we know there's three types of kalima. Right? 
Three types. What are they? And, and the three types that this word is built upon. Aleha yubna, meaning that speech. Ha, because we start off al kalam. I said kalima, but I said al kalam. Say kalam. Let me erase this part. Not do it like that. But and ka, one kalima. Okay, kalima is this, but many kalimat is kalam, right? So kalam is built on three types of words. Okay, kalam. Is built, oh, oh, well, I shouldn't put it this way, it goes this way. Kalam is built and based upon three types of words. Meaning, in Kalam, you'll only find how many types of words? Three types of words. Right? Meaning that, that you may call it this, that, and the other thing, but really it's just one of these three things. Right? We may get into tafasil, details about this one and details about, but it's really just what? One of did I say that enough times? Yes. How many types of speech are there? Three. No, give me more than one word. There are three types of speech. You guys going to give me, I'm going to sit up here and spaz out, you know. There are three types of speech. And when you teach this, you tell the person to give you a full sentence. Because then you see the person who's halfway asleep. Three. He doesn't know what he's saying. But if he says, oh, there are three types of speech. Even if he's sleeping, now he keeps recurring in his head. He got it there. You got it, because you got the sentence. You got me? Yeah. So, Al-Kalam is built on three types of speech. What are they? There is an Ismun. There is a? And there is a? Harifun. Now, we need to know what these three things mean. Literally, an Ismun is what? What is it? Super noun. Super noun. Super noun. Why is it a super noun? What is a noun? Person. Place, place or, thing. or thing. Give me an example of a person. Doctor. The doctor, right, okay. Give me a place. Masjid. 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 Give me a thing. Pen. 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 Okay, and that could be, that's a physical thing. Give me a metaphysical thing. Islam. Islam. Democracy. Who cares? I don't want democracy. I, I want Islam, you know. Democracy. Democritus was a homosexual guy in the time of... of uh, didn't you forget so, um, description? No, I didn't. We're dealing with nouns. Okay. We didn't do, we're not doing super nouns. Democritus was in the time of antiquity, so to speak, where everybody's name meant something, right? And Democritus, what was his idea? That everybody should do whatever they want to and they have the right to do what they want to no matter how it affects the rest of the greater society. That was the rule of Democritus. And they, they call it democracy, right? What is the rule of Islam? Because if you put it in the categorically statement, you say Democritus statement is the rights of the individual outweigh the rights of the jama'ah, right? Of the, 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 the collective, right? The collective community, the, the benefits of the collective community. That's why my punk neighbor plays his reggae music so loud and I can't really do anything about it, right? So that's his right, they would say. But what's the rule in Islam? The rule, now. I'm sorry, uh, the rule is in Islam is to, to say that you have to believe in the six things? No, no, I'm going to say that, Maimuna. Stay here. She's going to give the six <laughs> fundamental pillars of Islam. Yani, well, alhamdulillah, six pillars, six fundamentals of every man, which is true. Islam has that fundamental rule. But I, want, I mean by this in a different way, right there, with Barakallah Fiki. Now, I don't want your left hand. Yes? Um, no ums. Come on. Take a breath. Say it. It means in Islam we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the legislator of the laws and that is who we follow. Yes, that's true, but that's not what I'm looking for. Here I'm looking for an Asuli principle. An Asulific principle. The Asulific principle here is that, just like democracy's rule, was that the rights of the individual greatly outweigh the rights of the collective whole. Right? Islam is opposite that way. Islam says the rights of the jama'ah, the rights of the collective, outweigh the rights of the individual. You understand that? So if I have the right to um, do something, if it imparts some harm on the jama'ah, then I do not have that right. Do you understand how that goes? So for us to say, for these people who are thinking they're being moderate, thinking they're being modern and, and, and being, you know, what is the word that they use? 
liberal or well, I don't know what they, they try to, 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 to be these days or up to date. And they say, yes, democracy. We love democracy. Oh, Obama. You know, and other type of stuff like that. You know, may Allah guide them and us. May, may God guide us and them. Democracy is, not, democracy is nothing that the Muslim believes in. Never does he believe in that. The Muslim believes in a dictatorship. Alhamdulillah, the Prophet ﷺ lived in a dictatorship. And so did Abu Bakr, and so did Umar, and so did Uthman, and so did Ali. We like a, we like a dictatorship. And just like they told Abu Umar, if you don't rule properly, we're going to kick you off. That's our right. Does the American democracy believe in that? Yes. It says in the Constitution, we hold these truths to, to be, to be um, one. It says it comes a certain time in the Declaration of Independence where people get oppressed, they can overthrow the shackles of oppression. That's what they did to Britain, right? They said, you guys don't treat us right, we're going to do like this. So Muslims need to learn what our Constitution actually means and what it's based on instead of constantly claiming and screaming out the things that the Kufar claim out, thinking that they're correct. Okay? Now, that was a sidebar that really didn't have anything to do with the class, but, you know, it was very important for those people who don't like the sidebar. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. I'm not going to say his name. <laughs> I'm not going to say his name. I don't even remember his name. Alhamdulillah. But a super noun is different from a noun. How is a super noun different from a noun? Right, because this has just three things, right? Person, place, a thing. A super noun includes what? Descriptions. Descriptions. Give me a description. Beautiful. Beautiful. Outstanding. You know, beautiful. Smart. Smart. You know, green. Description. Okay? So that is all included in the super noun. What is a fa'lun? An action word. Action word. Action word. All right? Movement. He did something. Then... We have harf. What does harf mean? Come on, we went over harf for like nine weeks, right? The, small, the smallest letters, they're letters or connectors. They're connectors. They're, right, but what, what, are they, what, what do we know about a harf? Letter. Let's go to the sheikh. Go ahead. Give it. With extra meaning. It has a letter that has extra meaning, but that's not what we mean here. In the context of grammar, what do we need? Connectors. It's a connector. It's a connector. Give me some connectors. In, on. Go ahead again, third one. Huh? From. Okay. In, on, from. Those are some connectors. That's in the context. Now let's break this, 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 this verse of poetry down. Aqsamuhu. It, this who, goes back to kalam. Okay? So it's as it's saying, aqsamul kalam. Okay? Yes, no, maybe so? Yes. yes. Okay. That which, mean that, mean, mean this here is in the types of speech that are, aleha, that speech. Okay, that speech, aleha, upon it, upon these type, these, these three types. Okay? Yubna, it is built. Speech is built. You guys followed me? Yes. Do I need to do that again? Yes. Okay. The types of speech, aqsamul kalam. The types of speech that upon these types, right? It speech is built. That's what you mean. When I, I broke it down linguistically to say each word, but I, we don't have to put it that way. We can say the types of speech that upon it. Speech is, Speech is built. Okay? I drew it here. These things are what speech stands on. Speech is built up of three words, right? Three types of words. An ismun, a fitlun, or a harfun. Now, we told you what they mean from the English perspective. Now, we have to tell you what they mean from a linguist, not a linguist, yeah, a, a grammatical perspective. An ismun literally is from the word sumu. Sumu. It's from the word that from this word we get the word sama, which means to be lofty and high. Right? So it's as if somebody says, What's your lofty name? Yeah, your name is your, the loftiness, the thing that you're rufiat. Get? You get it, guys? Masmuk. Fam? What's the thing that raises you up? Your name. Masmuk. You guys get it? Nice, right? 
MashaAllah. Okay, now that we got that, what does it mean? It is a kalimatun. Together, come on guys, it should be second nature to us, right? Kalimatun, dallat, ala ma'nan, fi, wa lam taqtarin bi zaman. It is a word that points to a meaning in and of itself, meaning independent of any other word. It is a word that has a meaning that's free of need of having another word to define what that word is talking about. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Like, for example, man. We don't need another word to define and describe what we mean when we say that word man. Right? It is independent. And it points to its own meaning. And it's not tied to a time frame. A fi'lun is a word Kalimatun dallat ala ma'na fi nafsiha wa qad iqtaranat. And it is tied to ihda thalathat al azmina. It's tied to one of the three time frames. What are the three time frames? Give me one. Thank you. Give me two. Don't look at her. Give us a time frame. No us. Get off my wall. Come on. Off the wall. Because it helps you go, you go to sleep. How do you say wall in Somali? Dorabi? Okay. How do you say get off? Karput Dorabi. I said that right? Kafuk. <laughs> and I want to see this on the, on the internet. Nobody's saying I'm going to I'm I'm call my friend. So I. In, 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 in uh, California, she's going to teach me how to say it. I'll be ready next week. Inshallah. Inshallah. I'm Tawfiq. Tawfiq! My little man. Alhamdulillah. All right. So, where we at? A fi'lun. What, what did I ask her anyway? One of the three time frames. Give me one of the three time frames. Of a fi'lun, of an action. Immediate. She said immediate. Stop. Now it doesn't make a difference. Everybody knows what a time frame is. Okay? Well, that's what you guys start thinking about. What are time frames? No problem. It's okay. You should be nervous in class. That's why you come to class. Because you shouldn't get over the nervousness that you come to class because it should be challenging. Okay? But your nervousness should keep you awake. It should keep you sharp. Time frame. We mean here an action happened. Somebody did something. What do you say? That's past tense, when they did it, right? So that's the past time. If it's about to do it in the future, that's future tense. Or present if they're doing it now. Immediate comes when someone tells you, do it. Because an order demands what? Immediacy. An order demands immediacy. You understand that? So if your father says, get up, and you say, okay, and you lay there, imagine what's going to happen. Somebody's going to get the, get the big smack down, you know? <laughs> because, but it, can your argument be, well, I was going to get up. Because the intellect says what? No, an order demands immediacy. You got to follow it right away. It's not like tomorrow you can get up and say, I, I did it. See? So we know this goes into fiqh. See, stuff we're learning now is going to help you later on. An order demands what? You will hear that again when we go over Waraqat. The book Al-Waraqat in Usul al-Fiqh is the first, the Ajrumiyah of Usul al-Fiqh. We'll go over it, inshallah, if you stay. And you'll find in there, when it says, in order, yani what? Al-Wujub. In order, bin an. Now. Do it now. Okay? Unless there is what? Condition, condition set. Unless there's a condition. Pray. Maghrib. When? In the Garabat situation now, when the sun gets to a certain place. Because why can't we pray Maghrib right now? Because there's a condition set. But the order is for immediacy right when it comes in. When it comes in. And, but you have some leniency till a certain time frame. But there's an order. You understand that? Okay, now we, we learn it here when we learn what an action is. Because an action is either one of three actions. It's an either an amr, an order, 
Or what else is it? Al Madi. Or Mudari. Now we have to stop and say, what is Mudari? No. What does the word Mudari mean? Mudari, I say it, means like. Mudari means like. Now, why did we say three time frames and we only named one time frame? Madi is past tense. Amr it means order. But because an order means what? An order means immediacy. We know that Amr means immediate time frame. Right? Immediate future. Now, mudari means similar to or like. What does that have to do with present tense? Let's go back and understand this principle. I'm trying to give y'all the, the, the spirit of the whole language. That if you understand these little things now, you'll understand a lot about the language in the future. And ismun. Ismun is, is you have three, uh, you have an ismun, it says um, the same. Mukhlisun. Mukhlisun. No, no, let me do something else. Zaydun. Zaydun. Say Zaydun. Zaydun. And Zaydin. Same person, Zayd. When you say his name, raise my board, please. When you say Zayd's name, you're going to say, I, here comes Zaydun. Say it. Here comes Zaydun. The whole thing. Here comes Zaydun. Here comes Zaydun. I see Zayden. I see Zayden. Ah, uh, we just passed Zayden. You see that? In the language, when you refer to Zaid in these different situations, you refer to him as Zaidun, say it, Zaydun. with two dhammas, or you refer to him as Zaidan, Zaydun. as two fathas, or you refer to him as Zaidin, Zaydun. with two kasras. That is the way you deal with an ismun. Erase that too. Erase the Zaidun too. Thank you. That's how you deal with Zaid when it's an ism. An ismun. Al-Ismun. The, the, Al-Ismu. Al-Ismu. You have Zaydun. Zaydun. Zaydan. Zaydan. Zaydin. Those are the three ways. That's for Ism. The Fa'lun. Let's say Fa'lun now. Fa'lun. Now we have the three. We have the Amr, right? Amr. And the Amr is going to have a Sukun at the end of it. Ijlis. Ijlis. You see that? The Amr has a sukun at the end. It's always going to have a sukun at the end. It's never going to change. It's always going to have a sukun at the end. It's always going to have, always going to have a sukun at the end. It's not going to change like Zaydun, Zaydan, Zaydin. Even if you say Ijlisi, talking to a lady, it still has a sukun on the end, right? Ijlisu, talking to a bunch of people, it still has a sukun on the end, right? So it's always going to have a sukun at the end. It's mabni. It's constructed as mabni. Say that. Mabni. 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 Meaning that it's constructed in a certain format that does not change. It's constructed in a certain format that does not change. And a fi'lul amr is mabni ala sukun. A fi'lul amr is constructed on a sukun. It's always going to have a sukun. It's not like an ismun. You see that? Al Mahdi, say Mahdi. A fi'lul Mahdi. Fi'lul Mahdi, mithla jalasa. Jalasa. It's mabni on a fatha. Meaning it's always going to have a fatha on the end of it. Every fi'lul Mahdi has a fatha at the end of it. Every fit lul Mahdi has a fatha on the end of it. Right? Yes. Every last one of them. Jalasa. Jalasa. Ra'a. Ra'a. Meaning I saw. Daraba. Sami'a. Sami'a. Takallama. Nadara. What? what? Kataba. Qara'a. Name something. Kharaja. Kharaja. Salla, akala, shariba, dhahaba. 
Every fi'lul madi is going to have a fatha at the end of it. It's never going to change. It's not like in Ismun. The ends do not change. It is mabni. And it's mabni ala fatha. You understand that? These are your marching orders. Ain't no brain science here. Now, the third one is called mudara. Say what it's called. Mudare. Mudare means like. It means it's like an ismun. What do we say? We say here, yajlisu. Yajlisu. Yajlisa. Yajlis. Don't we say that? Who are yajlisu? Right? And yajlisa. Lam yajlis. It changes, right? No. Its ends change from the Dhamma to the Fatha to the Sukun. So it is like an Ismun. You see? You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. So we learn a principle here. The principle is that the Fa'lun is Mabni. That's the situation with the Fa'lun most of the time. And the situation with the Ismun is that it changes. It's Mu'rab. What is it? Meaning you can make i'rab of the ends. The ends change. You understand that? But the fi'lul mudari is like the ismun. Because its ends change based on what's happening in a sentence. You guys get my point? So, min an yajlisa. Min an yajlisa. Huwa yajlisu. Lam yajlis. Okay? Lam ajlis. Lan ajlisa. I said an. Min an yajlisa. Like the, which is the same thing as lan ajlisa. Okay? Oh, la, lan ajlisa. But it has the same outcome. Okay? So you guys understand my point here? The po no, you don't. Okay, the fi'lun. You said that never. The end. Fi'lun amr. An order always has sukun. Okay, I got that. A maldi always has fatha. Okay. Now the mudari is different. The mudari, his ends change just like the ismun's ends change. So the ismun, its ends change from a dhamma to a fatha to a kasra. Whereas the fi'lun, it doesn't take kasra, but. It does take fatha and dhamma and sukun, whereas the ismun it doesn't take sukun. Okay, you understand me? Yes. So here you'll see the ends change in the last letter. The lamb of this kalima is seen, and on the scene you have a fatha, or you have a dhamma, or you have a sukun. This is called mu'arab, i'rab, because it's mu'araban, right? Then we call this mudari. That's why we get this term. I'm trying to teach you the term so that you can understand what we mean when referring to this. Because you have to have this little subtle thing understood as you move forward. When we mention fi'l al we mean the fi'l that comes in the present future tense. Okay? Present future tense. But that doesn't, mudari doesn't mean present future. Mudari means that it's like an ismun. In what way is it like an ismun? It's like an ismun in that the lamb of the kalima changes based on the role that this word is playing in a sentence. Does that make sense? No. It doesn't? You don't get it. Yajlis, say yajlisu. That's the origin of the word. It's going to have a dhamma. The origin is going to have a dhamma. If it doesn't have a dhamma, something happened to it. Something happened to make the word change from yajlisu. Okay? Now, those things can happen. We'll have to learn about them later. But the point is that some of those things will make it say yajlisa. And some of those things will make it say yajlis. Okay? The fact that it can do that means that it is not mabni. 
Mebni means that it does not change its construction. It's built like this and it's going to stay like that. Okay? Likewise, in Ismun, the asl with it is its Dhamma, Zaydun. If it's Zaydan or Zaydin, something happened to make it Zaydan or Zaydin. Whatever, it may not be the letter before it, it could be just the placement of it in a sentence or the role that it's playing in a sentence. Right? Because we started off this poem, we said, Allah fi kullil umuri ahmadu. There's nothing before Allah, but it became fatha. Right? So we learned that this is muqaddam, this is, uh, is, is advanced in its place, but it's still playing a certain role. Hasr, hasr. Right, it's, 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 it's surrounding and it's, it's basically restricting the usage for a certain thing. Here, my point is here is not about hasr or what exactly that is. The point that it does change is what we need to pay attention to. Okay? The point that it changes. Yes. Maadi? Yes. We'll get to that. She says, okay, he said, Jalasa is fi'lul madi. However, we say Jalastu, or Jalasna, or Jalasu, and Jalaset. But Jalaset is the same as this. We'll get to the Arab of those when we get to that because I don't want to confuse anybody in this regard. Okay? Because here, that's still Mebni. That's still all mabani because the ta at the end of the word is a, is again these are huruful ziyadat. They bring extra meaning. Those are ismuns added onto the word. Okay, when you say jales two, two means what? You. It means ana. I <laughs> I don't forgot what language I was writing, but it means ana. Okay. It means ana, and this is an ismun. Okay? Two is an ismun. It's added onto jalasa as a suffix. Okay? At the end of the word. Since you don't say jalasatu, you don't say that, then this is made sukun in that regard and it says jalastu. Do you understand where I'm coming from? That to, uh, to put in the actor, because in Arabic, whenever you have the fa'lun, you have to have the fa'il, the one who acted. You have the action, you have to have the actor. Along with it. So this is the actor. Jalas two. In order to join them, they sukun that one and they put ta two or ta. Because you can say jalas ta or jalas ti. Based on whoever it is. Ana anti here. Na? Or jalaset. What is the meaning of jalasa? Jalasa means to sit. Huh? Jalasa means to sit. To sit. I said I use that one because everybody is sitting. Right. And how I would love to sit. Jalisun. Jalisun. Okay, that's an ismun also. Okay, whenever it has ten ween, we know it's a ismun, right? Because yes. we went over that. So does that answer your question? Does that make it more understandable? No, I understand. Okay, so we're gonna get through. We're gonna get through this as we go through. Nas I'm gonna leave the lesson like that right now, so we don't go too far. Okay? Oh, did we do it in this one? Ismun falun harfun. Harfun. We already did harfuns before. Everybody knows what a harfun is, right? What is a harfun? Connectors, right? We went over this. We, went over, we did a whole lesson just on, on, on huruf because we wanted to, to khalas minha, right? So really we're not focusing on ismun and fa'lun. We know what the, these are. Min ila wa an wa fi wa ruba wa ba wa ala. We'll get to them as we get there, okay? And the connectors have different rules. Like, for example, if we have min, min, say min. Min. Min makes whatever comes after it have a kasra. Okay? And, say an. And makes whatever comes after it have a fatha. Or what comes in the place of a fatha. Lam, say lam. Lam makes what comes after it have a sukun. Or what comes in the place of a sukun. Okay? So each one of these connectors, and min means from, right? This means that. Okay? This means not, did not. Okay? So these are connectors in a word. This is an before a verb and anna, you know, uh, before an ismun. 
We'll see those things as we get to them. There's a lot to do. Right now, I just want you to understand this. One line, one line at a time. We said, إِنَّ الْكَلَامَ عِنْدَنَا لَفْضٌ مُرَكَّبٌ مُفِيدٌ We understand that, right? قَدْ وُلْدِهِ Place and put grammatically in Arabic so forth, and it's intended, right? لَفْضٌ مُرَكَّبٌ مُفِيدٌ قَدْ وُلْدِهِ أَقْسَامُهُ الَّتِي عَلَيْهَا يُبْنَى Now, the types of, that, that speech is built upon, kalam is built upon three types of words. So kalam has only three types of words. There are no four types of words. There's no five. There's only three types of words in the whole Arabic language. Every word you will see will be one of these three. It will either be an ismun, a fi'lun, or a... That's it. It won't be anything else. All right? And an ismun comes like this. It's, it's, it changes. The ends change on an ismun. A fi'lun, usually the ends do not change, right? Except for the mudari, which is like the ismun, so it's changed. The harfun, the ends do not change. They're mabni. Okay? Just like that. But they change the ends of the words that come after them. Right? You guys got that? Aqulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. If I have any questions, go ahead and ask.